Today on Victorious Living. We got to get to the point where we got to start really loving one another. Hallelujah. I don't care how much somebody tear you down. You love them. That means that you're going to pick them up. Hallelujah. I want to tell y'all something else. You stop running your brother and sister down. Hallelujah. Stop using Facebook to talk about your brother and sister and what the saints ain't doing. This is Victorious Living from the Ministries of Greater Bethlehem Temple Church based in Jackson, Mississippi, comes this edition of Victorious Living with Pastor Robert Fortson. Brothers and sisters, this morning I speak to you from 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Paul is talking to the Corinthian as a father talked to his children. Amen. Have you gotten to the point whereby church business is more than just a typical sociable gathering? Have you gotten to the point where church business is serious business? Hallelujah. There are great religious movement that really don't see the real serious side of church business. They determine their success many times by numbers, by money. But they don't understand that the real assignment that a pastor have and, and, that a, and that's to the church is for us to make it to heaven. Not for us to become renowned in the world. Not to become the biggest or the greatest in the eyes of man. Not to look good, amen, from without. But the most important is to be good from within. Paul spoke to the Corinthians as a father. I want you all to know that I'm shooting for success. Hallelujah. This wasn't necessarily what we was going to talk about. It was, we were just to stop by there for a moment and a message that we was to talk about. But when I looked at it, hallelujah, it became the message. And of course, it's nothing unusual. Sometimes I can look at a message to three or four parts. Every one of the parts become a message. Hallelujah. I, I, I've learned that we're not going to cover all God's word in one service. We're going to be talking about Jesus until he come. And I might talk about it. You can talk about it today, amen, and it can unfold and take a, amen, a new, amen, a dynamic, amen, next time you talk about it. It's just the way God's word is. It's alive. Hallelujah. But I want you to understand this, amen, just the same concern that Paul had in the Corinthian day. If there is a pastor of God, amen, he has the same concern today. For those, hallelujah, that he has been given the privilege to serve. We want to make it to heaven. We want to be saved. We want to make sure that, amen, when it's all said and done down here, amen, that we would obtain that well done degree. We want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Verse 10, Paul says something here. And he was talking about how somewhat people classify him, but he is speaking somewhat ironic. Verse 10, it says, we are fools for Christ's sake. Now, let me tell you this. This don't mean that Paul had lost it. Don't mean that he didn't have good sense. It does not mean, hallelujah, that there was a loose screw in his head. But Paul said, I have become a fool for Christ. Hallelujah. I'm caught up in this thing. This thing means everything to me. I wake up for Christ. I lie, I lie down for Christ. For me to live is Christ. It's all about Christ. I become a fool for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. It's about Jesus with Paul. We was talking in Sunday school today. Nobody was really able to give Paul a dress as to where he lived. He probably had many address at the dungeon in the prison, hallelujah, as he did at any house. Because he had become, amen, obsessed for Christ. People got addiction all over the world. One of the fastest growing addiction, amen, is old people's at the casino. <laughs> Mortgaging their houses. Pulling down their saving. Hallelujah. Rearranging, amen, their will. Why are they taking the money back from the direction that they have given it? Because now, amen, they want to go to the casino. But Paul had an addiction as well. In one of his writings, hallelujah, when it came to Jesus, he said, I am addicted. When you are addicted, that means that you got to have it. Hallelujah. At any cost, you got to have it. Paul said, I got to have Christ, hallelujah. At any cost, I got to have him. He's an addiction, hallelujah. I need him, I need him, amen, every day. Hallelujah. Is that important? Read. Ye are wise in Christ. So he said, look. He's being ironic. He said, now. I'm a fool for Christ. But you're wise in Christ. You got it all together. Hallelujah. You know what you're doing. You know where you're going. It's bother me. Amen. Some of you, amen. If you check behind your ear, you're still wet. You know more than the preacher know. You know more than the pastor know. All you really got, hallelujah, is some jumping and shouting, hallelujah. I heard such a little say years ago, it's all right to jump and shout, but when your feet hit the ground, make sure they shout holy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, I am a fool for Christ, but, and you're wise. Read. You're wise in Christ. All right. We are weak, but Ye are strong. I am weak, 
but you the strong one. Hallelujah. In other words, amen, there are places I can't go. There's things that I cannot do. I have to come to church on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. I still have to come to prayer. I have to come to Bible class. I have to fast. I have to do it all. But you don't have to do none of that. You can pick and choose when you want to, and if you don't want to, you don't have to. And you're so wise that when you don't, amen, you're still, amen, on top of the world. Hallelujah. I'm going higher. Hallelujah. I'm getting greater. I'm wise. I like diversity. Hallelujah. Amen. I like to eat at this table and that table. All right, you're going to get food poison. I mean, let me tell y'all this. Paul was talking to the Corinthians. Like they was his children, and they were. When I saw this, hallelujah. And you know, usually I kind of jump over things like this. But God let me know that Robert, this is you now. Hallelujah. Just like Paul cared for those that I have actually put under him, you got to care the same for those that you put under me. And what he said, you're going to have to say some of those same things. Because if you don't say it, who's going to say it? Just like they heard it from him, they, the one that you have been entrusted to you got to hear it from you. Right. Was, yeah. Hallelujah. There have been maybe close to a few hundred people that got the Holy Ghost since we've been here. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But this is God's work. And God is serious about us making this journey. Hey, you all, I tell you, I told you before and I tell you again, you can say I'm talking to the, you might say I'm talking to the choir. I sound like a broken record. The Lord is soon to come. And I'm going to tell you, ain't but a few going to make it. Ain't but a few going to make it. And if you plan on being in that number, you're going to have to give yourself to take heed unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Read. Ye are honorable. You're but, honorable. But we are despised. But we are despised. We're hated. Hallelujah. We're talked about. The Corinthian, hallelujah, people are talking about you all over the known world. You got gifts and you got ministry and you're doing great things. Hallelujah. You got the gift of tongue and healing and, and you got all kinds of wonders that are being worked in your midst and people are talking about you. But they actually is criticizing me and they're talking about me. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this, you all. Paul was experiencing some hurt because of his love for the peoples of God. Read. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger. Paul said, look, even up until this present hour, hallelujah, amen, you got it all going for you. He said, but I'm hungry even now. Up until this hour, which means that the point, amen, that he was actually dwelling in then, hallelujah, he was suffering need.
I, I, I tell you that Paul, he wouldn't even, amen, receive compensation for the Corinthian because he didn't want them to even be charged against him. He didn't want them to think that he was concerned about their stuff and thing. He was concerned about their life. Hallelujah. God is looking out for you, amen, when you don't even know that he is. But he is looking out in his way. He has given us what we need. We're going to have to align ourselves and take heed to it. God don't have a package for you everywhere you go. Hallelujah. He don't have a design plan for you. Hallelujah. Every time you actually make a turn, you have to stay on the road that he put you on. You can try to get from Egypt to Canaan if you want to in the wilderness. The only train that was going, amen, to Canaan, amen, was the one that Moses was driving. Hallelujah. And there was some other route that you can go. What am I saying, you all? God provide a way for us. But the enemy always trying to make habit of what God is doing. Trying to bring destruction. But we got to stay together, you all. We can't let it happen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, he said, I'm despised. Read. Even into this present hour, we both hunger and thirst. Hunger, thirst. And are naked. Naked. And are buffeted. And have no certain dwelling place. Paul said, look, I got no, I got no certain place that I live in. And he said, I'm having trouble every way that I turn. Life is still trying me. Verse 12, and labor, working with our own hands. He said, look, I labor, I work with my own hand. Being reviled. He said, look, I am being reviled, I'm being mistreated. Read. We bless, being persecuted. He said, even when I'm mistreated, hallelujah, I don't in return mistreat those that mistreat me. He said, even when they re revive me, when they actually mistreat me, you know what he did? He said, I bless them. I want y'all to know Paul was saved. Let me tell you all this. I told him in class, we got to get to the point where we got to start really loving one another. Hallelujah. I don't care how much somebody tear you down. You love them. And that means that you're going to pick them up. Hallelujah. I want to tell y'all something else. You stop running your brother and sister down. Hallelujah. Stop using Facebook to talk about your brother and sister and what the saints ain't doing. Hallelujah. Use the Facebook and talk about love and caring and sharing and doing good. Hallelujah. It's bad when you become an enemy to yourself. Let the enemy be the enemy. Don't you advertise him. When you get on the Facebook and you talk about, start talking about, amen, what people is doing to, to you, you ain't doing nothing but advertising for the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. If the devil going to get sank to advertising for him, he sure enough got a good business. Hallelujah. You see what Paul did? 
he, he didn't even talk about the saints. He said, I'm a, I'm a fool for Christ, you wise. Hallelujah. Read. Being persecuted. We persecuted? Suffer we suffer it. We suffer it. Let me tell you this, you all. I know that we're going to suffer for the namesake of God. Read. Being defamed, we entreat. Uh-huh. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscarring of all things unto this day. Read. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons. Now let me tell you this. We're going to go ahead and move to a close. But I come to you in love. Paul said this. He said, Corinthian, I'm not trying to shame you. I'm not trying to belittle you. This is not my reason for writing this letter unto you. But I'm writing to you not to shame you, but I'm writing you as beloved sons. I'm writing you to warn you. Paul said, look, you're my children. Hallelujah. You're my God-given responsibility. You're the one that I care for. You're the assignment that God has given unto me. I'm not trying to dismount you or to shame you or to show you up. But I'm writing to you, hallelujah, because you, amen, are beloved sons. Amen. I'm writing to you because God began you, amen, through the gospel that I preach. I'm writing you, hallelujah, because you are, amen, a given responsibility unto me in order for, to make sure we have a successful journey. This is why I'm writing unto you. Amen. Let me tell you this. I don't know what concern that what other pastors have. I hope that all of the concerns are genuine. But I want you to know that the Bible let us know that they're all not going to be genuine. There are some, hallelujah, that love to have people because they make up the crowd and they do all kinds of things. But their real concern is not amen according to what thus saith the Lord. Sometimes people, amen, they know what it takes to impress you and they'll give you, amen, that which impresses you. Hallelujah. But Paul let them know that Corinthian, hallelujah, my concern for you, a man is none of the above. He said, I'm writing to you because, amen, you must, my beloved son. Hallelujah. He said, but I want you to understand something else. Hallelujah. Amen. And read in this passage of scripture, read. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ. He said, look. He said, though, hallelujah, everywhere you turn, you can get a good sermon. There are some people, hallelujah, amen, that can give you instruction, hallelujah. He said, you may have 10,000 presenters, you may have 10,000, hallelujah, amen, that would give you a good message, hallelujah. But I want you to know, but there is not many fathers, hallelujah, amen. Everybody in here, there's a child. You don't have but one father. Paul was letting the Corinthian church know, hallelujah, that there is only one father, hallelujah, and there is only one, amen, father-son relationship. It's because I begat you, amen, with the gospel that I preach. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, you all. There is no relationship like a father and a son relationship. There might be some men's hallelujah that are 
stronger. There might be some men that got more money. They might be in higher position, hallelujah. But I want you to know, hallelujah, amen, I only had one daddy. And even though, amen, my daddy was a farmer, hallelujah, and sometime, hallelujah, we didn't, wasn't able to eat the fat back. We had to eat the dried up peas after we have already picked the worm out of them. But that was all right. That was my daddy. Yeah. And I was pleased to sit at his table. And I don't care who I would get around, hallelujah, amen. I never, amen, dismantled my daddy for anyone else. There is many instructor, instructor, but there is one father, amen, somebody that's going to be there for you and somebody that's going to care for you and somebody going to have that fatherly love for you. Hallelujah. But I want you to know that when God put you in a position, amen, he put everything that is needed in that position in order to bless you and to take you where you need to be. You got to be careful who you listen to. You got to be careful where you go, who you attend to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people devise in their own way. They're doing their own thing. They're going their own places. They're making their own decision. But Paul said, I've been defamed. He said, that's all right. Hallelujah. I've been dismantled. I've been discredited. Hallelujah. Amen. It don't feel good when those that, amen, God have given you to discredit you. But I want you to know it was very important for Paul to let those know that I understand the assignment that be given unto me. And I'm not going to let anything, amen, keep me from doing what God has given for me to do. And I'm going to stay there with you regardless of where you go. And I'm going to labor for you. And I'm not going to get wrapped up in stuff and things. And I'm going to stay there for you. And so he said that I'm not coming because of your shame, but I'm coming, amen, as beloved sons. He said, I'm coming to warn you. And though there's 10,000 instructors in Christ, he said, we have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, he said, I have begun you with the gospel. And then he said, look, I beseech you. He said, I'm pleading with you. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like a copy of today's message, need prayer, or have questions about receiving Christ in your life, give us a call at 601-354-2599 or visit our website at gbtchurch.org. Victorious Living with Pastor Robert Forkson is brought to you by the Ministries of Greater Bethlehem Temple Church, Jackson, Mississippi.